absolutely all of the patients I'm seeing now who have eczema-like rashes are addicted to steroids. 100%. Most of them began with atopic dermatitis or eczema in youth, about 95, 92%. The others were psoriasis patients, seborrheic dermatitis patients, a thing called Grover's disease, rosacea, photodermatitis, uh, allergy, um, chronic usage of steroids under casts, etc., etc. Smaller, less than 10%. So for all intents and purposes, the eczema people outshone number-wise. In 1920, 1930, when there were no steroids, the manifestation of atopic dermatitis eczema was itchies in the crook of the arm, behind the knees, maybe in a three-year-old and a two-year-old, maybe slobber dermatitis because of drool in a four-month-old or eight-month-old, maybe a little bit of thickened skin because of scratching for three, four years. And all of them, at least 95%, up to nearly 100, improved and cleared in the summertime because they found out and they knew damn well that the sun made it better. They had trouble in the winter in Europe, back east, in colder climates. They scratch, they itch, they tie them up, they put you know, uh, uh, wrappings around them so they couldn't scratch themselves at night. They had humidifiers that, but they were, and lubricants, etc., etc., and antihistamines, that's all. But they all got better in the summertime and it, burn, it burned out. Well, we got steroids in the 50s, wonder drug. And I think it is a wonder drug when it's used appropriately. So they started putting on mild hydrocortisone, which was the first steroid. Made it a little bit better, made the itching better. Didn't solve the problem, but it made it better. They started using it chronically, week after week. And then this rash started spreading. Oh, the doctor, oh, bad eczema. We need a stronger steroid. And the drug companies had been putting out stronger steroids, middle strength steroids. So that was the go-to drug, the first one. And that evolved until the super potent steroids came out in the mid to late 60s, or a little earlier. Super potent, meaning the vasoconstriction, vasodilatation rebound, the superiority of the steroid was 10 times, 100 times more than hydrocortisone. And those were prescribed instantly with the first visit. So the addiction occurred very quickly. We're talking days to weeks. And that's why we were seeing the horrendous cases in the late 70s, early 80s. Horrors. And... The next step was that they were sent because the GP, the internist, the allergist, the dermatologist didn't know what to do. They were sent to the brick building, the medical school, the, me the uh, hospital. They were sent to Mayo. They were sent to a, a guru in England, um, Dr. Aaron. They were wrapped in steroids for two weeks every day with wet wrappings and they were sent home clear until they flared when they got home and that became routine and then the other institutions inundated by the local severely addicted patients called now bad eczema appealed to the drug companies we need help well, the drug companies saw money and they started looking at 20 drugs to help bad eczema. The JAK inhibitors, the Dupixins, a whole array of medicines, and five of them are on the marketplace now. These institutions donated their patients as guinea pigs. So just one, one clarification. You, you're saying these drug companies were looking at uh, drugs that would address 
eczema? Was it actual eczema or was it topical steroid addiction? They had no idea what topical steroid addiction was. So, so they what they it. what was presenting, what they thought was presenting as eczema, probably wasn't that. And right? they wrote the papers up saying, "Look, we are helping eczema people," when indeed all of their study people were addicted people to steroids. Every one of them. They just had red skin and rashes that were similar to eczema, but not. And the results of the studies that were published were very poor. No better than placebo. Minimal help. A little better sleep, a little less itch. What is that? That's so subjective. How do you have a number system on that? It got approved by the FDA. And suddenly, with Dupixin six years ago or five years ago approved, there are five drugs on the marketplace that are being advertised on the six o'clock news Every night, millions being spent on advertising, buy my new drug. Our drug is helping sleep, eases itch. Oh, look at those pretty faces of the young girls going to soccer practice. They don't have, they're using our drug. Isn't it wonderful? Every night on the six o'clock news. So suddenly we have gone from a curable disease by some sunshine in the summertime and time and a little lubrication to a multi-million dollar expense, unnecessary, with side effects, with worries about the long-term future, and they don't do a darn, a damn in curing anybody. That's what's going on now. Therein lies my annoyance and anger, and the suffering of the individual patient.